Hello, I'm delighted to be contributing to this Austrade Job Summit on, in the area of tourism. My only regret is that I can't be with you in person because this is a topic which is very current, very live, and is being played out in different sh shapes and sizes in many countries of the developed world. It's very important that we reflect both um, um, at a practical business level about what, what, what's happening in the jobs market, but also perhaps on a wider societal and policy-driven um, uh, level as well. Because my hunch, and I'll develop this in, during my talk today, is that we're seeing something that is more than just a reluctance of people to return to work or to, to join the workforce and that with a few tweaks and um, adjustments we can get back to the, 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 the if you like the steady state that existed before the pandemic um, in terms of my discussion i will share some slides with you and some observations and hopefully they will contribute to your wider discussions today. So hopefully this now gives you access to the to to my slides. And um, what I've been asked to do is to if you like, throw an international gloss on the wider discussions you're having, obviously with a focus on um, the Australian situation. But I suspect um, that there are very clear parallels and um, there, is, there are lessons that we can collectively learn from each other internationally. Um, I think one of the things that has been a an unintended uh, byproduct, if you like, of the pandemic has been the unprecedented interest in tourism employment and the jobs crisis in the global north. Um, tourism employment was a very, I suppose, a very focused and niche area in most countries, not widely debated in the wider, um, in, 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 in among wider stakeholders governments and certainly not within the media and certainly during the pandemic there was a um, definitely a heightened interest in the consequences of the pandemic for uh, for work and employment um, in the sector and post pandemic the focus has shifted from perhaps a more um, concerned gaze at the the trials and the difficulties faced by um, by the tourism workforce uh, to the, the consequences uh, for consumers, uh, for employees, for organizations, companies of staffing short shortages. In the global north, um, it's worth stressing because there's no evidence at this stage that we're seeing similar trends and developments in the global south, although um, to be honest, the, 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 the if you like the reemergence of tourism in most countries in the global south has not really picked up pace, so it's difficult to assess what's happening there. Um, we see evidence of this interest certainly in um, in the media, and I'll come back to that briefly in a minute. Um, but also um, in 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 the reaction through stakeholding elder engagement, governments, associations and indeed academic research. And this forum today, this job summit, is certainly an indicator um, of this interest. It's worth reminding ourselves the extent of, of actual job losses that are estimated to have been caused directly by, um, by the pandemic. And to recognize that, if you like, to, to, to bring things back to the way they were in the past. Um, there are a lot of people who would have to be attracted back into our into our uh, um, our workplaces. Um, Sixty two million um, was the estimated loss between 2020 versus 2019, down to 44 million. But um, however we look at that, those are very significant numbers, 
and just assuming that they'll just walk back through the door uh, once things get back to normal um, has proved to be somewhat naive if it ever was an assumption that was made. Um, we did some work on the, the, on the media, on the media um, um, interpretation of what's happening and what was happening um, during the, the pandemic. And we found very clear evidence that of an upscaling of debate about tourism work, tourism employment um, from the features pages into the, um, the news, the news headlines, the news, news page pages. And there were periods, certainly here in the UK, during the pandemic, when tourism employment, tourism jobs, and the loss of tourism jobs um, was regular fare on the, 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 the six o'clock news on, a, um, on the BBC and other media outlets. Um, and you'll now be very familiar with the, the news headlines from this one from Australia, highlighting job shortages and the consequences in our industry, highlighting the chaos that has resulted, particularly in the travel sector, and airports have been particularly targeted in, in terms of the, the attention they receive because of the, the, as we can see, the very visual impact here in the, in the US of what are perceived to be um, staff shortages, both on the operation of the airport operations side and in the airlines themselves. Um, likewise, in Europe, we're seeing exactly the same um, here in the UK very much, but also in Ireland, across Europe and in a number of countries, um, in, in the Netherlands, um, where one airline has come up with a an innovative solution to, to, to challenge um, uh, uh, baggage issues that are faced by, uh, by passengers there. Um, but not only in the travel sector, in the hospitality sector as well. Um, there's a lot of evidence of restaurants having to moderate their, their offering, having to, to curtail their opening hours. Um, in response to staffing shortages, um, certainly in, in, in the in the skills area, skilled areas of, um, of of kitchen work of chefs, but also right across the piece. Um, and the questions are starting to be asked by the media: um, Can hospitality's uh, recruitment crisis ever be fixed? Um, and that, in a sense, is, is, is why you are there in your meeting today um, and why I'm very um, interested and, and, and enthusiastic about contributing to that discussion. Um, suggestions as to how to sort the problem, up pay, advertise more and show progression to attract young people to hospitality. Um, certainly that, that narrative is an important part of the discussion. Um, whether that in itself will, um, will uh, so to speak, solve the problem has yet to be seen. Um, we're seeing operational changes. We're seeing uh, uh, businesses deliver different products in different ways, whether it's through the use of technology. And there's certainly been an upscaling of, of, staffs, of, of staff substitution technology robotization in some cases, the use of, of, of um, online um, ordering using QR codes and the like, all of which impact or contribute to, if you like, alleviating uh, staffing issues. And we're seeing that uh, globally, but particularly in the US and Europe, and I'm sure uh, with yourselves as well. Um, Again, yes, a lot of discussion about what is being done, how the industry is responding, and um, certainly what um, perhaps some of the, the benefits of the process are that some of the, the, uh, the worst jobs, those which don't really qualify as decent work in ILO terms, may start to be phased out as people find innovative solutions to, um, to operate off offering their their products and services to their uh, to their customers um and the and academics are getting in on the act um uh 
in terms of where the hospitality and tourism industry fits into uh, the, uh, the, the great resignation. Um, and likewise, looking for solutions um, through academic uh, routes. Um, in, interesting that at this stage, academics are cautious. They're talking about reflections. And in a sense, um, that's all we can do at the moment. We can reflect, we can speculate, but it's very difficult to know um, definitively uh, what the, um, the, the, the solutions to these issues might be. So the question I have really, and looking at, um, at, at the situation in so many countries and seeing similar situations replicated from jurisdiction to jurisdiction to jurisdiction. It's only where, um, where, where governments intervened and um, prohibited, for example, job losses early on in the pandemic, that, um, that some of these issues haven't arisen. China, for example, did not allow retrenchment um, across the economy. But um, that in itself presents issues when the industry in effect closes down. So the question really is, um, the industry appears to the tourism um, and travel industry appear to have been caught like a rabbit in the headlights, unable, unexpected, um, unsuspecting of what was around the, the post-crisis um, corner. And the question really is, was this really one of what um, Donald Rumsfeld would have called an unknown unknown? In other words, had we any reason not to anticipate this? Uh, were there indicators that should have forewarned us? And can we really get just get back to normal, which seems to be the mantra in a lot of debate and discussion at the moment. Um, the starting point really is we have to recognize that the industry faced huge challenges in terms of its um, working environment before the pandemic. It's not that everything was milk and honey in, in, um, in tourism employment and tourism work. And this, and, and this diagram just highlights the multitude of interrelated issues that the, the industry uh, appoint, um, employment faced and arguably continues to face precarity, low wages, antisocial working hours, perception of low skills, limited workplace organization, blur blurred boundaries in terms of uh, work across sectors, et cetera, et cetera. And um, I'm not gonna cover all these. Of course, what this, this diagram doesn't do is highlight or point to the positives of tourism employment. And I, I don't want to downplay those. It is a sector which people do really enjoy and people do get um, huge satisfaction from working in. Um, but at the same time, certainly in terms of public perception, this is the image. These are the, the, the drivers of how people see work in the industry. So what we're, we have to recognize and I think this is this is this is important. Is that we were going through a, um, we're going through processes of inevitable change, um, which are independent of the uh, the pandemic, demographic change, our aging population in many uh, global north countries, um, means that the traditional sources of work uh, of, of employ uh, employees, our youth perhaps are more curtailed, curtailed in their numbers, but also um, the, the aging population creates competing sectors in the labor market, the care sector in particular here in the UK is, draw, is, is very much fishing in the same labor market pool and facing the same job shortage, um, staff shortage issues as is, um, as is tourism. Impact of technology on work, um, the de-skilling effect um, and perhaps uh, uh, reducing aspects of the job satisfaction that people have traditionally got out of work in the industry. The emergence of alternative economies in tourism, the gig economy, and then also linked to what's happening at the moment, 
the structural and psychological impact of crises on labor markets, issues like changing perceptions of life work balance, where we live, where we choose to live, which has been really heightened in, um, in the pandemic in many uh, urban areas, particularly, and how we live, working from home, working in a place of, um, uh, of our um, employer's determination. Um, we wrote early on in the crisis in 2020, we wrote about, um, uh, we, we speculated whether what we were seeing in terms of the labour market, the workforce and tourism, was a new crisis, was something which was entirely new, was in, or was in fact an amplification of the norm. And we concluded the latter. And I think my, my own assessment at this stage, post-pandemic, would be that that is very much true, that the key drivers, the key issues are structural, are to do with the culture of the industry, which predated COVID by, by, um, um, by a long way. Um, so tourism employment in crisis, we, we've seen the direct effect of COVID-19, obviously in terms of business closures, and even post-pandemic, the failure of many businesses to reopen um, technology substitution, lack of customer confidence, government restrictions, et cetera, et cetera. We can also identify indirect effects, other things to do, other jobs to get. People found other jobs during the pandemic and have been reluctant to return. And what I would call the induced effect, um, changing values, attitudes to work, new models of work, People are looking at work in a different way. There's no question about that. A, a lot of surveys, a lot of studies at the moment are, um, are exploring this sort of area. Um, then moving from the, if you like, the accumulated evidence of change, what about the policy response? What, what can be done about it? And um, I think, there's uh, looking internationally, there are a number of responses, a number of different ways of, of trying to make sense of what's going on. And your own, as I said, your own um, uh, forum at the moment is part of this sort of process. In Canada, um, the starting point was, was a survey of, of public perception, building on a previous study of a similar nature um, uh, five years ago. And what's really dramatic and what really struck me is the, is the shift to the negative, if you like. Um, perceptions of tourism work were never that great, but they've been seriously damaged by, uh, by the, the consequences of, of COVID. And that is a, is a salutary um, lesson to come out of this whole process, the one I think we should reflect on. And the question then is, is this, a, is this damage which could be repaired? At a policy level, a number of organizations, uh, um, uh, government, quasi-government, um, um, industry-led, have been focusing on, on this issue as well. In the UK, the, the UK hospitality sector, um, or UK hospitality, um, pr has produced what is, in some respects, one of the better workforce strategies for the sector of the industry that I've seen in my many years of, of, of observing this sort of area. Um, but the assumption still within it is that if this is a crisis which could be fixed. And I certainly have certain doubts about that, certain um, questions around, around that. Um, and their solutions, and obviously you can't read that, uh, that slide, but um, hopefully you'll be able to pick up the original. Solution is around um, focusing on recruitment, if, if you like. If you give, the, if you uh, if you um, promote the right message to the marketplace, people will come back. Maybe um, skills and training certainly. It's an industry where we can, we are, we are we, we do have a skills deficit, and that that is a, a valuable, but not necessarily. Um, uh, uh, a problem, a, a solution as such to the, the wider crisis. Looking at people's working lives, I think that's an important consideration because we're starting, and this, isn't, this is not, has not been the case in previous reports of this nature, 
we're starting to recognize that, that, that people's lives matter within the context of hospitality work and that we perhaps need to be more accommodating of their lives in order to, if you like, um, achieve mutual benefits. So they benefit from our recognition and we benefit from their contribution. Image of the sector, um, slightly disturbing assumptions there about tackling misconceptions about the industry. Well, the question is, really, are they misconceptions? And I think there's a lot of evidence, although there are very good employers, and I'm sure many of them are represented in, 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 your, in your meeting today, um, uh, there are also major issues in terms of working conditions, precarity, um, um, low pay, and other issues in the industry uh, across most countries. And then interestingly, there is reference to infrastructure, something which um, where specifically issues like housing and uh, transport are mentioned. And I think this is something that's been recognized, particularly in more remote parts of rural Australia, um, but it's something which perhaps needs to be given wider consideration. Cost of housing, tourism often is located in high cost areas and tourism workers find it challenging to live in, 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 in the areas where they work. Um, a similar um, initiative by the Welsh government in, in our devolved administration here in the UK, um, uh, but very much on the, on the marketing promotional side, trying to get the message across that the industry is, is a, a great sector to work in, maybe. Um, but that's very much the, uh, the, the mantra, and, and it's one which is, which is repeated in, in, in different ways um, here um, in, in, in a number of different countries. Uh, a particular approach I like, and, and it's not only because I'm, uh, I'm involved in it as, as the academic advisor, is the, the Scottish NGO um, uh, sponsored by the Scottish Government, um, our Fair Work Convention, which while not a directly addressing uh, staff shortages as such, is looking at the notion of fair work in the, con in the uh, context of hospitality, not the whole tourism industry, but hospitality. And what's, I think, very important is the stakeholders who are involved in the process, because unlike most other initiatives of its kind, it is inclusive. It includes um, trade union, it includes um, direct employee uh, voice in the process. And my contention is that unless we actually engage with our workforce um, and understand what they want from work, we're never really going to um, create a work environment which will attract people back. Um, so questions we need to ask about the labour market impact of the crises. Has COVID fundamentally altered attitudes to and expectations of work in general and work in tourism specifically? Um, is, is this notion of the big resignation, um, which, which is a, a term used in the States, signal more than a short-term reaction and shift? What about the employment implications of, of, of urban flight, people moving out of urban areas, of, of office-based lives? Um, we're seeing that certainly in a number of cities here in the UK. What do these changes mean for tourism? If people move further out, a lot of the, 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 the available workforce may move out with them, particularly young people, um, uh, etc. Will traditional reserve army sources of labour return for tourism? Students, working holiday visa holders, migrant workers, and, and, and that sets aside in, here in the UK issues of Brexit as well. Um, in other words, in, in, also, does, in a sense, tourism have the will and creativity to change in terms of the, the employment offer it, uh, it, it, it puts forward? What's the role of technology? And what about customer expecta consumer expectations of service? Um, how will they be affected by all this? I think we need to start thinking about these questions. I know some of them are fairly challenging. And I would say that there is a ne neglected agenda here. Um, I think there's a lot of information we don't have. We don't know enough about 
work in our sector. We don't know enough about the gig economy um, and the work that's offered there. Um, we don't know about um, the, the profile, the economic and the personal circumstances of people who work in our industry. We're finding evidence in another study we're doing um, of significant in-work poverty among um, tourism workers. What about tourism work and mental health issues which have come to the fore during the, the pandemic? Um, issues of abuse and sexual harassment in the workplace which have increased during the pandemic um, and the, 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 the wi wider issues of inclusion and diversity uh, within, uh, within, within the industry. Um, spatial locational influences in tourism work, as I mentioned, tourism employment in high cost locations, yes, very much so, particularly resort areas. Um, employee representation and voice, giving agency to tourism workers, listening to them, doing something we haven't historically been very good at. And perhaps starting to, to think about um, the design of jobs to reflect the workforce ecosystem. Fitting the man, advisedly I use that word because that's the quote, to the job or designing the job for the man. And I think increasingly we need to go for the latter. And that, in a sense, is um, perhaps our, our way out in terms of, um, of creating a new reality in tourism employment. And also um, highlighting that consumers and their drive for, for lower costs in terms of a good the products and services they look for, and this is difficult to say in, at times of high inflation, um, et cetera, um, they need to take responsibility for the consequences of demanding lower prices um, uh, um, in terms of, of what they're buying, the, good, uh, the goods and services they're buying. So, that's me. That's all I want to say today. I'm, I'm, I'm conscious that uh, we are bound by, by time constraints here. Um, I'm very happy to engage and to um, talk further if anybody wants clarification or wants elaboration on any of the points I've made here today. Um, I, um, I'm certainly um, very happy to, to, as I say, to to talk to you further, to, to engage with you further. Um, and I'll be sharing my slides with the, the organizers um, in, in due course. So um, thank you very much for your, uh, for, for, um, for, thank you very much for the opportunity to join you today. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation and my best wishes for the rest of your debates and discussions.